Okay, whoa, I'm in a new location. All right, so uh, this is gonna be a good video for the vlog channel, why not? This is my idea, this is the Teching 101 idea for a brand new TV show, all right? And I've had this idea for the last couple of years. To my knowledge, a TV show like this has never existed. Um, Although, when I watched WandaVision a couple of months ago for the first time, it sort of had a similar kind of structure to it, but it wasn't the exact same thing. So I don't think this is a show that has never existed in the way that I'm envisioning it, and I also don't think it's a television show that could ever exist. Um, I, I guess unless you just had like an absurd amount of money and you could fund everything yourself, um, because I don't think any network or any company would probably touch this show, um, not because of anything in the show itself, uh, although a, a larger budget in the show would definitely help, but it's just because of the way that it would have to be marketed, um, or like the advertising, it just would not work. Like no, no company, no television station would like touch it because of that reason, okay? So I gotta walk you through this, this television show idea, all right? I'll walk you through it and you tell me what you think, all right? This might be the greatest idea ever or the shittiest one, all right? So the show is going to start off um, as a sitcom, okay? Just, just a sitcom. And when I say that, I mean just think of the most generic sitcoms you've ever seen in your life, okay? Uh, growing up, I remember watching a few episodes of uh, King of Queens, Married with Children. Uh, a couple years back, my friend got really into uh, Modern Family, so he was showing me a few episodes of Modern Family. That's a more modern example. Um, there was a show that I watched when I was a teenager called, um, it was on AMC, I think, or ABC. It was on uh, Grounded for Life. That was a Grounded for Life. That was a sitcom that had a little bit more of like, that was more like PG-13 because they were like, they cursed in it and stuff. Um, I guess you could say like Full House, you know, rest in peace, Bob Saget, but I guess you could say Full House was also a, a sitcom, but that was definitely geared for a more like a TVG kind of audience. Um, this, this sitcom would definitely be more like grounded for life, you know, deal with a little bit more mature themes. They, they might curse a bit, you know, some, some more like adult situations, not exactly for like, like a whole broad audience, but that would be the basic idea for the sitcom, okay? And and um, I, I don't have any ideas on who would be cast in this or anything, like who the actors would be or anything like that. So just use your imagination, I guess, fill in the gaps, okay? But um, the first episode, right? Like the first episode, it, they do everything that every other sitcom you've ever seen does, right? So they have a set for the family's house and it's like middle to like upper middle class kind of house and it's like a family of like four you got like the husband the wife um two kids that are both like maybe teenagers maybe three kids or something like that whatever okay just a stereotypical you know sitcom kind of setup and they deal with very sitcom related things and there's there's gonna be canned laughter there's gonna be like you know maybe not canned laughter maybe we'll go back to like the filmed in front of a live studio audience maybe something like that fine sure whatever um and so it, it's gonna like open up with some corny jokes you know there's gonna be dad jokes out the wazoo you know it's just like comes down like the dad comes downstairs and he's trying to get dressed for work you know he works as like a banker or an accountant or something and he's just like honey where are my cufflinks and then whatever and he's like oh dear i don't know where they are you know some stupid joke like that right and then the kids come in and like the teenagers come in and they're just like whatever dad I don't care about your life or whatever you know it's like gonna be it's just gonna be like that okay and so we're gonna have like an A plot and a B plot and like I don't know the A plot could be like the husband trying to get a promotion at work and he's trying to like impress his boss or something like that like he goes to work and the boss comes out and he's just like you know that big promotions you know right around the corner I wonder who's gonna get it and then the husband is like oh man I, I got to impress the boss but he ends up like making a fool out of himself along the way and at the end of the episode it's like the boss found that very endearing and just like you know what uh hank i'll just call him hank after hank hill of course be like you know what hank i really like your moxie you know you tried to impress me and it worked even though you failed miserably it worked you know you get that promotion that'll be the a plot the b plot 
will be something like, I don't know, the kids go to school. Like, they go to high school or something, and it's like, I don't know, the son gets caught, like, cheating on his biology test or some shit, right? And it's just like, oh no, the teacher wants to have a parent-teacher conference with my dad! What's gonna happen? How am I gonna get out of this one? It just, it's gonna be... That. It's just gonna be a sitcom. The same setup you've seen a million and one times. There might be some cursing in there. There might be, like, some mature themes at the end. Like, the husband gets home and is like, I got the promotion. And then there's, like, some, like, low-key sexual, like, innuendo with the wife and the husband. And then they walk upstairs and, like, episode ends. And, like, the, the ending theme is even, like, you know, like, like, bada-ba-boop, bada-ba-boop, bada-ba-boop as, like, the ending theme plays where that kind kind of shit, right? Oh, there's gonna be a dog, too. We have to have a dog in there. I want a boxer. Let's have a boxer after uh, my late dog, uh, Duchess. She was a great dog, best dog ever, and uh, I miss her dearly, so we gotta have a boxer in there. Okay, so, and they live in, I don't know, freaking, uh, I don't know, a suburb of Seattle, Washington. Fuck it. Don't care, all right? It doesn't matter where they live, okay? It really doesn't. Okay, New Jersey, Washington, freaking California, uh, Nebraska, anywhere but North Dakota, basically. Okay. I mean, they can maybe live in North Dakota. I don't care. Whatever. Anyway, some suburb of a major city. That's how these all start up, right? Okay. 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 So, and there's gonna be a theme song, too. Like, a wacky theme song. Like, I don't know. Let's just call it The Clarks, or whatever. It's just like, you come on home, and you sit in front of the TV. Your mom's cooking food. Your dad's reading the paper. You know, it's like, whatever. Okay? It's like, The Clarks. Okay, fine. You got a dog? The Clarks. Alright, there it is. Fine. Okay. Second episode. Alright, second episode is gonna start off the, it's gonna be the same exact thing. Other boring A plot, boring B plot, same thing, okay? Well, actually, I shouldn't say boring, just rote. Like, it's been done before, but it's entertaining enough to keep you watching. Like, if you're into sitcoms, then you'll enjoy this. Like, let me tell you something. I, you know, I watched a few episodes of, like, Modern Family when my friend was showing them to me, and I was entertained. I was entertained for the time that I was watching Modern Family. So I wouldn't say it was boring, it was just, I really had no further inclination to go out and, like, watch every episode of Modern Family. Or when I was, even when I was a teenager and I was watching Grounded for Life. I remember I would get home from school every day and I would watch that show, but not because, like, I was really invested in it. Like, man, I can't wait to get home and watch the next episode of Grounded for Life. It was just, I got home and it was on. But I remember watching that show and liking it. I just never liked it enough to, like, go out and buy the whole seasons on DVD back, back when, like DVDs was like a big thing back before streaming was a thing, right? So I never had any impl inclination for that. Actually, I remember getting home every day from school and forgetting the show even existed. Like I'd, I'd watch an episode and then go to bed, wake up, go to school the next day, get home and be like, okay, I'm just got done with school. Oh yeah, Grounded for Life song. You know, just like, I'd always forget it existed and then watch an episode. I'd laugh, I'd be entertained. And then, you know, after the show was over, I'd go about the rest of my night and just completely forget it existed, right? So the, the show won't be boring, it'll just be rote. It'll be stuff that has been done before, but, you know, there's, there's, it's written well enough so that you're laughed, you're entertained for the 30-minute runtime. Okay, fine, sure, good. Okay, so back to the second episode, all right? Same basic kind of A plot, same basic kind of B plot. However... In the episode, we're just gonna have maybe one line of dialogue. Just one dot line of dialogue. It's played off like a joke. Like, let's say the kid comes home from school, and the mom is there, and the mom is like, oh, hello, honey, how was your day at school? And the son is just like, oh, man, my teacher is such a freak. Like, she's such a monster mom. Like, she's just she's a homework crazy giving out monster, right? Whatever. She she gave us this assignment, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish it. And the mom is like, oh, well, let me help you with that, honey. Maybe, maybe that'll be the B-plot or whatever, right? That's just all it is. Just like one basic line of dialogue. Like, it's like, I hate my teacher. She's evil. She's giving out homework like crazy. She's a monster. She's like a vampire, whatever. Okay, and then the rest of the plot is just, it's played off like a joke, and the rest of the episode is just them working on the homework assignment, right? Okay. Um, 
And then we could still have like, I don't know, three, four, episode three or four is the same basic plot of the sitcom, right? It's the same thing over and over and over again, except in like the third episode, uh, we might actually have like that parent-teacher conference where the, the parents go to meet this teacher that's like so mean to their kid. And it's like, you know, it's okay, we're gonna meet this teacher and we're gonna figure out what's going on here. And they meet the teacher and the teacher is like really mean. Like just think of that mean teacher you had when you were in school because we all had one right and just you just sit down and just like oh wow she is a mean teacher and they, then they, at the end of the episode is the family walks away with the kid and the kid is just like see I told you and then the parents are like yeah she really was oh my god she was she's a pretty bad teacher yeah and she's like yeah I know right and so that's like the end of the episode it's like you get a laugh and then you cut to the ending credits like ba da da boom ba da da boom this has been the Clark's adventure today right okay so, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, like, around episode 7 or episode 8 in a season of, like, let's just go with, like, a standard season of, like, I don't know, 22, 24 episodes. Why not? Let's say it's a season of 24 episodes, right? I'm gonna say episode 7. So, like, a good third or so of the way into the season of, like, a weekly series. This is not going to be, a, like, a Netflix, like, binge watch kind of situation. This is gonna be weekly fucking releases. This is gonna be on basic cable, alright? Like, Fox is what I'm thinking of, because I remember also, when I was a teenager, watching the, uh, the animation domination on Fox. So there'd be, like, new episodes of The Simpsons, new episodes of Family Guy, Cleveland show, but I also remember they would fit like a live-action sitcom in there as well. There was one that was, um, oh, what was it called? The War at Home. I remember that. I remember I was watching, like, I loved, like, Sunday nights on Fox. is like the new episodes of Family Guy and stuff, but there was also a short-lived live-action sitcom called The War at Home. I think that's what it was called, and uh, it, it was, once again, kind of like a PG-13 kind of sitcom where there was a little bit of, like, mature themes and stuff involved, right? But it was still a sitcom. didn't last for very long. I think it only lasted, like, a season or two. But anyway, yeah, stuff like that, right? There's so many of these things, right, out there. So, episode seven, though. We're gonna have the A plot of this just be something boring with the parents, okay? But the B plot is going to be the son trying to, like, pull a prank on his teacher or something, right? This really mean teacher he's had through every episode up until now, right? So let's say um, him and his friends decide to pull, like, a practical joke on the teacher, right? So they, like, go to her house and she lives, like, out in the middle of the woods, like, out in the middle of nowhere, really, and they're gonna, like, egg her house or throw, like, toilet paper on her house or whatever. And so that's going to be like most of the episode. The episode's going to be the boring main plot with the parents, and then the B plot is like, we should really prank our teacher. Like, yeah, we should do that. And so they're planning on like, okay, you're going to get the rotten eggs, okay, and you get the toilet paper, and we're going to like TP your house. It's going to be so funny, ha ha ha, right? Just kind of something dorky and quirky that like you would believe would be in a sitcom, right? Okay, so let's say the end of the episode, and I'm talking like, maybe a minute or two before the credits roll, okay? Like, it's quick. It happens fast, okay? Let's say a 22-minute show, because you have to have time for commercials for a 30-minute episode block. So let's say, let's say, like, 20 minutes in, like, right before the credits roll, like, to the point where you might have very well just turned off the show at this point, right? But for those of you that are still watching, right, there's a scene where, let's say, the kid shows up at his teacher's house, and he, like, throws the eggs at the house and his friends like booked and they left and so he's there by himself and the teacher opens the door and it's like oh no the son is gonna get in trouble because he's egging the teacher's house and his friends bailed on him oh no what's gonna happen and so the teacher comes out and she's just like what are you doing and he's just like oh i'm sorry and then out of fucking nowhere the teacher is just gonna transform like into like a fucking demon devil vampire whatever you want to look just look into the monster manual in D&D under devils or demons pick something out of that some weird slug monster maybe like and then you're sitting there and before you even have time to register or process what the hell you just saw considering this comes out of fucking right field out of nowhere before you have time to process anything like that the sun pulls out like some really weird like steampunk you know weird like demon slayer buffy the vampire slayer some kind of weapon and just boom 
boom, just fires at this slug monster, right? And then out of nowhere, the rest of the family shows up in like a battle van and they come out and they're all loaded up with like guns and like sacred knives and like the dog is with them. And then this slug monster like creates a bunch of spawn, like you humans will not. And then like creates a bunch of spawn and they attack the family and like everybody's there, husband, wife, the daughter, the other kid. I don't know how many kids there's going to be in this, but whatever. Anyway, they're all in this. And they're just fighting the shit out of these slug demons. Super quick cutting. There's like the house catches on fire. There's explosions in the background. You know, that the husband comes out with like a giant fucking claymore. Like, Aah! and like the wife or the daughter comes out with like a giant freaking rocket launcher. Like, pff, pff, you know, and it's just fast cutting. Budget gets insane here. Like all of a sudden the budget jumps from like sitcom to like MCU level shit. And just swoosh. And then like, that's it. That's it. That's just end of episode. After this really cool fight, they kick the shit out of the slug demon, and then the final scene of it is just, like, the house burning down, and the family just killing the demon or whatever, and, like, you know, I don't know, maybe the mother is, like, a cleric or something, and just be like, you shall be banished to hell or something like that. She recites a prayer or something, and then, you know, uh, the family turns around, and, like, the flames are in the background. Boom! End of episode. But this time it doesn't end with like the wacky credits, like ba da da boom, a ba da ba boom. Now the credits are all of a sudden serious. Like even the um, even the credits, like the font change. Like the font before was like goofy, kind of like crayon credits. You know, like this is a wacky sitcom with the family. Now it's like super serious embossed credits, and like the ending theme is just like boom boom boom, boom boom boom, or maybe some like really dark, creepy choir music in the background. Like, it's like, Alleluia. You know, as, as it's just very somber, I think that works better actually. Very somber, quiet, like creepy choir music or like monks chanting in the background. That That's kind of like Castlevania's ending theme, right? Like Castlevania kind of ends with like the, like the, oh, you know, that, that kind of stuff. So let's just do like creepy kind of like choir music in the background, you know, not in your face, but just enough to be kind of unsettling, right? Okay. And then in the next episode, episode eight, completely different fucking show. Like, it is now revealed that this family are like a long, a long lived family of um, like uh, devil hunters or like, you know, demon hunters, vampire hunters, whatever you want to call them. Oh, there should also be a grandfather. There should also be like a grandpa or a grandma or both. And they're both like, you know, like, like every episode they're complaining about, they're like, oh, my hip. Oh, well, when you're 72, you got to take medicines for everything. Sometimes not always in your mouth. And just like, ooh, grandpa, why are you being so gross? And then it's revealed in this episode, he busts out, he has like a freaking like Gatling gun, like a mini gun or something, like, you know, just like that kind of shit, you know, okay. And so it's revealed that this family has like deep-seated history. Maybe there can be like a friend of one of the kids and, and, and you know, he was just normal and then he finds out about this and then the family have to explain to the kid like what they do and just like, you know, they, yeah, we're the Clarks, you know, the Clarks have been hunting, the, the Clarks is probably just an alias. We, we've been hunting demons and vampires since like the third 13th century. It's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, it's just like, and so through this random kid, the friend of one of the sons or whatever, we find out about this family, okay? And the rest of the show is that. The rest of the show is that. We do not go, different opening theme, different ending theme, completely different soundtrack. Whatever the soundtrack was when it was a sitcom, boom, kicked out the window. We get rid of, maybe we could keep the canned laughter. That would actually be kind of funny. Like they go up to a vampire and cut its damn head off and like blood is splurting everywhere. And it's like, the audience is like, aww, you know, something like that. That would actually be kind of funny, but kind of corny maybe. Um, but everything completely changes and it's an entirely different show, okay? But the same characters, the same characters keep with it, and, you know, whatever personalities existed beforehand, they are still present. So the husband still does work as a banker, and, you know, the, the, the son still is, like, you know, struggling with his schoolwork or whatever, and there's, like, love interests for the daughter or whatever, like every other sitcom, I'd, oh my god, she's going on her first date tonight, you know, something like that, you know? It, it, that stuff remains, it's just 
in their off time at night, turns out they're fucking demon hunters, right? And you could reveal, like, oh, actually, the, the husband actually was a demon. He's half demon the whole time. And then this is how the mother and the father met. And the kids are also part demon for that reason. And, and maybe the son has, like, some kind of curse upon him by some ancient demon they fought against a few years back. And he's been cursed ever since the young age. We find out about dog, the dog, the whole time. Was like, what's up with the dog? Oh, the dog is a, a member of our family that hunted demons in 1720 and um, he was cursed into the body of a dog, into a body of a boxer, and so he's been just hanging out with the family for the last 300 years, right? And so we just find out that's, that, that's the key with this show. It's going to be deep lore. Deep lore all over the place. It's not going to be a thing where it's just like, we hunt demons, whatever. It's like, we're going to find out through the course of this show, because we have the right of two-thirds of a season left, okay? So we're going to find out through the rest of this show about the deep lore of everything. And the whole sitcom thing is going to be really like, why were you in a sitcom? And it's going to be a thing where... In the earlier episodes, I want this to be a thing where in the background of every single of those early episodes, from episodes one through seven, there's going to be little hints and clues into their identity. So the idea is they're going to be like they moved to this town to fight this demon who was the son's teacher, right? And um, they, they had to be like undercover, so to speak. And so, but, but every so often in the background, like, I want there to be like, you know, a shot of the family's living room, right? And way in the background, there'll be like family pictures that you can't even really see because they're so far in the background of the shot. But like, there's like a picture of like like some like old school family photograph with some guy with like a sword or something, but you can barely see it because it's way in the background. I don't want any of this to be too in your face, obviously, to give it away. Like, like in the center of the, um, the family's living room, there's like a demon skull on the coffee table. Like, there's not gonna be anything like that, but it's gonna be very, very, very subtle. Like, maybe there's a scene in one of the episodes where, um, I don't know, the wife comes down early in the morning and the husband's in this kitchen making breakfast, and the wife is just like, oh, you know, oh, you're up early, and the husband's like, oh, I had a long night. And that's just to imply, maybe we can have the episode be like, oh, is he cheating on his wife but no actually he was out hunting demons and maybe there's a scene where you know one somebody in the house is like cleaning a dish but if you zoom in it's actually he's not actually cleaning a dish he's cleaning like blood off of something like a sock or something i got blood on my sock you wouldn't actually say that but it would be like this, right? Maybe in one episode, like the episode has like one of the kids wearing like a bandage on their arm and it's like, oh, it's just never mentioned. Like, oh, he must have hurt himself or something. Or maybe the A plot or B plot of the episode is like, he's trying out for basketball practice. Oh, he fell and scraped his, knee, his elbow. That's why there's a bandage on it. No, it's because he got into a demon fight last night, right? But there has to be a way to spin it in a way where it's believable that they have this cover identity during the day and that's the identity we are seeing. And then at night, when the cameras are not rolling on this sitcom, boom, it's it's this. And then in the seventh episode, the very end of the seventh episode, boom, it just comes out of nowhere, okay? And the rest of the episode, the rest of the season is this whole premise. And deep lore, a lot of stuff involving the family. I wanna just go, you know, balls to the wall with this kind of shit, right? Now, the reason why this show could never happen aside from budget constraints, but the reason this show has can never happen is because this is a marketing nightmare. How the fuck do you market this show that I'm pitching without spoiling the big surprise? You can't, and that's the point. This show would not be hardly marketed at all. I, I would go out of my way to make sure this show is not marketed at all, okay? Maybe there's a couple of teasers on some commercials. So you're watching Fox or some channel, and then in one of the commercials is like, catch the new sitcom, The Clarks, on Sunday night at 7.30 p.m. And you'd be like, okay, whatever, just a regular fucking, you know, sitcom, who cares? That's the point. It cannot be marketed. It can't be advertised at all. Nobody can really know about this. I want this to be like the most select group of people would be watching this show. The people that would literally, so honestly, it would just be people that just happened to be watching that channel at that time and they had nothing else to do, so they just put that show on in the background. So right Right away, no network is going to go with that. Be like, okay, so you want this show to not be marketed? You don't want anybody to know about this show? Nope, I don't. I don't want this show to be marketed on the internet or Facebook. I don't want there to be an official Facebook page or a Twitter page. It, the actors that are in it, 
I want them to downplay their involvement in this as much as possible. If there's an interview with one of the lead actors and it's like maybe that like the actors on like um, maybe it's Brian Cranston. I think Brian Cranston would actually be great in the role of Hank Clark, don't you? So let's say he's on James Corden, he's on the Late Late Show, and and James is like, so um, you know, Mr. Cranston, hey Brian, you know, how many uh, what projects are coming up down the pipeline for you? You doing anything? And then Brian can list off like three things. He's like, well, I'm working on this movie, and then I'm doing this, and um, there's also a sitcom coming out soon on Fox. It's called The Clarks. I'm going to be the main character in that. That's not a big deal. It, it has to be downplayed as much as possible, okay? Because when this finally airs, I don't want it to be a big thing. I don't want everybody to be like, you know, if it's marketed like they were just a normal family from the burbs, but they're actually demon hunters. That ruins the whole fucking surprise. Do you know how hard it is to have a surprise, a genuine shock moment in 20 22 with the internet it's pretty much impossible okay because everything's gonna be spoiled and shit so it's like keep it as down low as possible so I want this to hardly have any marketing presence whatsoever then it airs on like let's have it be the weirdest time slot ever let's have it be like a Tuesday night at 10 o'clock on like Fox or some random network that like nobody's gonna be there. Who's gonna be watching this network at 10.30 at night? No one, basically, no one, okay? So, you know, people will definitely watch it, but it'll be a small group of people that'll watch it, okay? And those first six or seven episodes, no one's gonna, I mean, they might mention it like, ah, it's a, it's a pretty decent sitcom. Yeah, I was watching this sitcom, The Clarks, last night. It wasn't that good, but it was all right, I guess. You know, whatever, it's a sitcom, right? Just a small, small, small group of people are gonna see it. And then I tell you what, man, that twist at episode seven, that twist at the very end, like 30 seconds, it turns into a fucking war movie. We have the big transformation sequence of the teacher, like, Bleh! you know, all that crap. You know, that's going to be really good budget effects. That's where all the money's basically going to go. And then the rest of the season is just them hunting down demons and shit, maybe changing locations, moving to another town, whatever. And we'd learn about the family along the way. And then this is going to be a thing where it's like, Imagine being just watching this show on like in the back of your mind or it's just on in the background and all of a sudden this happens You're like what what is this what? And then it's a completely different show and then like all of a sudden it's going to gain traction my, my hope my my ultimate hope for this would be the show would go through its entire first season without really having any mention at all and then like a couple of years later or a couple of months later or whatever all of a sudden, people talk about this, like, hey, like somebody just finds it and just like, holy shit, did you see this show? It apparently aired like a year ago, but it's so weird. It starts off as a sitcom and then it turns into this insanely good, deep in like lore rich world building, like has deep themes and stuff. As for the rating of it, PG-13 when it's a sitcom, it's gonna be related like TVMA when it's like it reaches that point. There's gonna be blood, there's gonna be gore, there's gonna be, you know, just, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be all over the place, right? And so it, it airs its first season and like maybe a couple months later people find about it, talk about it on Reddit or something and then all of a sudden it's like, holy crap, what's with this show? And then it's like, and then everybody can finally talk about like, yeah, that was the plan the whole time. It, we were basically, we created this awesome show out of nothing. So like I said, kind of similar to WandaVision where WandaVision starts off as like a normal sitcom and then it slowly gets more and more dark as it goes. But the thing is with WandaVision, that's part of the, and the reason that worked is because it was the MCU. And so everybody knows from watching the MCU who Scarlet Witch is, who Vision is. And so when that first episode of WandaVision hits, you are not watching that thinking that, oh, this must just be a regular sitcom. It's obviously Scarlet Witch and Vision, for fuck's sake. Like, they're in the, the sitcom. It's obviously not a normal sitcom. You know, starting WandaVision, this is going to lead to some weird shit. And it did, right? Uh, by the way, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, really pumped for that. But anyway, yeah, so you knew something was up with that. And that's why they could get away with, like, the first few episodes of WandaVision being what they were. And even with WandaVision, though, they were kind of in your face because they expected you to understand, like, where's this, where's this going? So there's, like, a few episodes of WandaVision in the early episodes where she's, like, you know, thinking of, like, or she's hearing the voice on the radio, like, Wanda, Wanda. Like, it's not even going 
going to be that in your face in the, the Clarks in this, in this show. By the way, the show could literally still be called The Clarks after the twist. It's just that the, the title changes and the last, you know, the title and the ending credits change and all that shit. But it's not going to be in your face like that. It's going to be very, very subtle things like in the background, in the kitchen, on one of the fridge magnets. Maybe, maybe something as simple as like there's a splot of blood on one of the blankets. Like one of the kids walk in after killing a demon and throw their jacket on the chair and the jacket gets a little bit of blood on it and it's in one of the shots but nobody references it. The camera does not zoom in on it. In fact, the camera actually gets one shot of it then it cuts away, right? And it's just like, you have to go back and watch those first six episodes and be like, holy shit, this was planned from the beginning but it was just not seven episodes in, it finally gets revealed. So yeah. That's my, uh, that's my TV show idea. I also feel like I'm not the first person to come up with a concept of this, like start the show like this and then have the twist. But I feel like if a show like that already does exist, which it probably does in some capacity in some like variation of what I'm saying, it might have been spoiled beforehand because you want to, that's the whole point of marketing, to get people to watch your show, right? So how are you going to get people to watch your show? No, no network is going to actively not promote their own show, right? Because they want to get as many people to watch it because that's where it gets the ratings and that's where the money comes from, right? So you literally have to have your own small fortune to run this, where you'd have to pay for everything yourself and you get the network to do it, but you have to like expressly like, I don't know, pay the network the money that they would make off of the advertising because otherwise there's not gonna be any of it. You'd have to finance the whole thing yourself basically, but I think this could work. And if it ever does happen, I guess I, I guess I can't now because I'm spoiling the whole thing. So if I ever do get the money to make this show, which I never would, I, I can't now because I just spoiled it. Like me making this video right now kind of ruined it. But I've had this idea for like a couple years now. So I just wanted to share it with you. I haven't posted on the vlog channel in a while. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is my little nerdy room that I have in my house. This is going to be like my, you know, video game, anime, manga, Japanese themed room. I get some like video games and shit back here. Maybe I'll do a tour of this room at some point. But anyway, um, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, Teching signing out. What do you think? I'd watch it.